can't allow much of what is happening to be covered up, particularly the abuse that is happening within families. That was Prime Minister Andrew Holness at the annual Heal the Family, Heal the Nation service in 2018. His appeal is still very relevant. There's no excuse for abuse. If you or someone you know is being abused, speak out. Contact the police, domestic violence intervention centers at Constant Spring and Matilda's Corner or the police 119 number. You may also get in touch with the Gender Ministry's domestic violence helpline for males and females. Let's all work together to protect our men and women from violence. Our magazine continues with more useful information. Stay with us. Jamaica, this are the national cleanup crew. Come join the fight, stop mosquito from bite you. That me, we are go clean up school, workplace, home and community too. Let us fight against dengue. Join the national dengue cleanup crew as we search for and destroy mosquito breeding sites from January 24 to January 26, 2020. Jamaica, this are the national cleanup crew. Come join the fight, stop mosquito from bite you. Mosquitoes wanted dead, not alive. A message from the ministries of health and wellness, culture and local government. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, January 20. The historic town of Port Royal welcomed its first ever cruise ship this morning. The Marella Discovery 2 docked at the newly renovated pier early this morning with about 2,000 passengers on board. During a recent tour of the port, Culture Minister Olivia Grange said developing Port Royal into a cruise destination would bring increased economic opportunities for residents. So we are happy that we are now going to be able to showcase this rich heritage to the world and that we have been able, as a joined-up government, to take it to the stage. This has been long coming. Meanwhile, work is expected to begin shortly on the Port Royal Street Coastal Revetment Project. This follows Cabinet's approval for the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JASIF, to grant a $950 million contract to s g Road Surfacing Materials Limited. During last Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing, Information Minister Carl Samuda announced that SNG would construct a one-kilometer composite seawall and revetment structure that is designed to resist storm waves. The company will also raise the roadway to reduce risks of flooding and upgrade minor drains crossing Port Royal Street. In addition, a 4.7-kilometer boardwalk will be constructed for recreational use as well as an 80-meter fishing beach. All in all, it is an area of great concentration and importance uh, to the development of downtown Kingston. So it forms part of an overall structure. In other tourism news, Jamaica's first artisan village in Falmouth is now 90% complete. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the village, which is being constructed at a cost of 5.7 million US dollars, is expected to be handed over to the public by the end of this month by the Port Authority. We're going to do some theming of it yes. because it's not just a regular artisan village as people know. This is going to be a thematic one. It's going to have a theme about rum and, and sugar yes. and um, mermaids and all of the <laughs> mythologies around yes. Falmouth and Trelawney and so on. And so when people come from abroad, they will be able to move um, in a thematic flow. Minister Bartlett was speaking during a recent GIS Get the Facts recording. Individuals wishing to apply for a provisional driver's license will have to obtain a pass mark of 75% on the road code test as of January 25. Currently, persons applying for a provisional driver's license, commonly referred to as a learner's permit, are not required to prove their knowledge of the road code through a written test, but that is about to change. Acting Senior Land Transport Policy Officer Francois Graham says drivers can use the existing literature to prepare for the test, while the ministry works to publish the official road code on its website. The test is expected to confirm that the applicant has knowledge of the road code, which entails the general rules of the road, road signs and road safety. So once a person has passed this test, the government of Jamaica can be comfortable that this person knows how to operate on the road. Mr. Graham was speaking on Friday at a JIS think tank. 
Meanwhile, Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ is reporting that while the Portmore Tax Office will be open on Saturday, January 25, it will not be processing any provisional driver's licenses on that day. TAJ's Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Maris Houghton, says they are anticipating additional persons coming in the last week to obtain their learner's permits before the new regime takes place. But she's reminding applicants that the last day to do that is Friday, January 24. So we are just reminding persons that they should not come to the Portmore Tax Office on the 25th with the expectation of getting a provisional driver's license under the existing regime. Ms. Houghton, who was speaking at a recent JIS think tank, says the TAJ currently processes about 8,000 provisional driver's licenses each month. The new regime, which takes effect on January 25, will require applicants to first go to the Island Traffic Authority's examination depot for their written test before going to the tax office. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says he is satisfied with the progress of work to rehabilitate the main building of the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. During a tour of the facility on Friday, the minister got a first-hand view of the work, which includes a $100 million renovation of the roof. A new ventilation system is also being installed, while debris is being removed from several hospital floors. It's a very active site, as you can see. Not only are we rehabilitating the building, the main building, but we're also doing the work on the ground for the new hospital. I'm convinced that when this is all over, it's going to be a model facility for all of Jamaica and indeed for the region, for the Caribbean and beyond. The minister lauded the staff for maintaining high-level professionalism and quality client service during the renovation works. He is also urging residents of Western Jamaica who use the institution to continue to exercise patience and utilize the alternative arrangements for service while the project is completed. And finally, a bronze statue of Jamaican Olympian Asafa Powell will be unveiled at the National Stadium on Sunday, February 9. Minister of Sport Olivia Grange says she has received the all clear from Asafa and will move forward with plans to erect the monument in his honor. The sprinter and his wife, Alicia, signed off on the maquette during a recent call on Minister Grange. The statue is the work of renowned Jamaican sculptor Basil Watson. It is the last of four monuments in tribute to outstanding Jamaican sports stars commissioned by the Sport Ministry under the Jamaica 55 Legacy Program. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Protect yourself from the flu virus. Visit your nearest health center or doctor to get the flu vaccine. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or by using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid the spread of germs by not touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. And be sure to regularly disinfect surfaces and objects that are used often. Remember, your health is your responsibility. Twenty nineteen was a banner year for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. A number of trade agreements were signed, several dignitaries visited our shores, and we extended our reach on the international stage. Catch the highlights next. Security, environment, climate change, health, visa waiver. Financing and trade are some of the areas of cooperation secured by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in 2019. This is fundamental to ensuring that each of all our ministries is able to have the benefit of international partnership and support in the achievement of their goals. Let's recap the high points. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs maintained strong relations with multilateral partners in 2019. As a result, Jamaica and China signed an agreement for border security and airport operations. 180 million RMB grant, or 3.5 million Jamaican dollars, was allocated to purchase CAT scan machines for installation at our two airports. These scanners will ensure that we maintain international security standards, reducing the risk of non-detection of contraband 
and of course, counter tax avoidance. Another partnership on security was inked with the government of Japan, this time to provide sea vessels to bolster maritime surveillance and disaster response capabilities. It will also facilitate climate change adaptation and increased investments in the country. Meanwhile, 20 million euros or 2.8 billion Jamaican dollars was secured through the European Union to support public finance management reform and forest management programs. We are assisting the government in building the necessary structures of a modern integrated financial management system. Importantly, the program will also be seeking to better utilize forest resources for economic and social purposes. Still on the environment, Jamaica ratified the Regional Agreement on Access to Information, Public Participation and Justice in Environmental Matters, also known as the Escazu Agreement. As president of the International Seabed Authority, Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith led the adoption of a high-level plan for 2019 to 2023. I would like to reaffirm Jamaica's continued commitment to and support for the work of the Authority. Oceans and seas assume special significance for the economic sustainability of small island developing states such as Jamaica. Minister Johnson Smith also gave assurance of government's commitment to reviewing the protocol and procedures of the 1997 U.S.-Jamaica Maritime Counter-Narcotics Cooperation Agreement, commonly known as the Shiprider Agreement. Jamaica takes seriously any semblance of violation of the human rights of our nationals. I can indicate that with Chile, in summary, we focused on trade. With Costa Rica, we signed a memorandum on political consultations to deepen relations. With Ghana, we followed up on implementation on the agreements between President Addo and Prime Minister Holness when the President paid a working visit to Jamaica. This official working visit of the Ghanaian President also resulted in a visa waiver for Jamaicans travelling to Ghana. Regarding Morocco, we discussed the prospect of future high-level visits and methods by which we can expand and deepen our cooperation framework. And with the UAE, we signed a memorandum in relation to mutual visa waivers. The vibrancy and dynamism of Jamaica's bilateral partnerships was evident at the hosting of Diplomatic Week. The event saw the participation of 31 non-resident heads of mission and the presentation of credentials of 19 new ambassadors to Jamaica. The government of Jamaica therefore continues to be guided by our strong desire to use our presence at the multilateral level to find meaningful solutions to common challenges. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in 2019 made significant achievements in the area of trade. Through the Council for Trade and Economic Development quoted, Jamaica secured a two-year suspension of the Common External Tariff CET, for imports of lithium-iron batteries until April 30, 2021, as well as an increase in the CET for imports of clinker and cement into Jamaica to 50%. Cari Forum, of which Jamaica is a part, and the United Kingdom concluded and signed the Cari Forum UK Economic Partnership Agreement EPA post Brexit. This means Jamaica is now a signatory to the Cari Forum UK EPA, which will guarantee uninterrupted preferential trade between the region and the UK in a post Brexit era. The Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Ministry explored further opportunities at the second staging of China International Import Expo in November. High-level participation within the region included the signing of six financing agreements between CARICOM and the European Union. The 114.8 million euros are to support the framework for CARICOM integration and the implementation of CARIFORUM State's Economic Partnership Agreement. Also on the agenda are the Caribbean Investment Facility and Criminal Justice Systems, as well as promoting regional integration in the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. In February, Jamaica became signatory to the CARICOM Multilateral Air Services Agreement, MASA, giving allowance for increased intra-regional travel without restriction on routes for airlines owned by CARICOM nations. Through a Memorandum of Understanding, Jamaica will provide support for the operationalization and institutionalization of the CARICOM results-based management system, Phase 2. During 2019, the country successfully hosted the 8th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference under the theme, 
Diaspora, Building Pathways to Sustainable Development. We obtained support for five projects on the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange, and we also had an execution of 40 projects across the country on the day of service, including education, healthcare, community development, and public safety. Other outcomes included the endorsement of the draft National Diaspora Policy and a new Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council was also established. The conference remains one of the principal forums for engagement and inclusion of our diaspora in the country's development. In the wake of the Windrush crisis, the ministry provided assistance to 40 Jamaicans who were disenfranchised of their right to live in the United Kingdom and access other benefits. 27 were contacted by the British High Commission UK Home Office. Five had their rights fully or partially reinstated, while others are awaiting conclusion. Seven were denied and two were deemed ineligible. In addition, a two-year compensation scheme was established by the British government. I knew that the day would come when we would announce the compensation, but no amount of money will ever undo the injustice or the pain or the hurt or damage, not to just to individuals, to their families, and the consequences will live with them forever. But this goes some way towards redressing those uh, considerations. Following the passage of Hurricane Dorian in September, the ministry established an emergency telephone line to assist Jamaican families seeking to locate loved ones in the Bahamas. Jamaican families had contacted us with a desire to try to locate 48 persons in the Bahamas from whom they had not heard. I'm very pleased to be able to advise that we have uh, located 43 of them and they are in good health. The Foreign Affairs Ministry also collaborated with the Jamaica Defence Force and the Canadian government to deploy 120 members of the Disaster Assistance Response Team DART to the Bahamas. The ministry continued to promote and support Jamaica's representation on international bodies and was successful with the following candidatures in 2019. The country was elected to the Commission on Narcotic Drugs to serve for the period 2020 to 2023 and re-elected to the Council of the International Seabed Authority. Professor Vereen Shepherd was re-elected to the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination and Mrs. Margaret May Macaulay will continue serving the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Another significant achievement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was the completion and handover of its new headquarters building in downtown Kingston. With these modern premises and expanded facilities, the Ministry will be much better placed to carry out its operations in the pursuit of Jamaica's international relations. The work of this ministry is to ensure that our multilateral and bilateral relationships and regional and hemispheric, that they all coalesce and are driven in a way that contributes to national development. Better roads are now making it much easier to travel through sections of the island. Video surveillance technology on our road networks are providing a second eye, and the aviation sector is soaring to greater heights. Plus, a prosperous voyage was led aboard our marine industry. This, Mr. Speaker, is positive news for the government and people of Jamaica. The Minister of Transport and Mining continues to shape a new Jamaica. Sit with us on Tuesday, January 21, 2020, as we renew its 2019 achievements. In 1912, the then Costas of Kingston built and handed over theatre to the people of Kingston, the ward. The building hosted scores of local theatre productions to the delight of visitors. But the building was closed in 1982 due to a need for structural repairs. It's been a long time coming, but the ward will finally reopen its doors. And it's pretty soon. Take a look. basically wanted to show persons and agencies that have been supporting us in the World Theatre Project where we are, what we have done, 
and some which have given us funding. We wanted them to see because they give funding to specific projects. We have basically finished in terms of the contracting for the seating where you are now that is completed. With respect to the carpeting, we have also completed that. The carpeting, they are just the carpets are the carpet is here, the contractors are ready, they have started to do some of the, the preparation work. The ceiling that is also in place. All the changing rooms have been completed, all the restrooms just finishing touches. Nothing for us to worry about. Even the tin carvings, which are these. These tin carvings we are basically redoing. So where we are with the theatre is really where I am standing. This is where we are. We are at the stage. We are quite advanced in the preparation for, in terms of the design and the costing for it. As a matter of fact, we have already done an estimate. We have drawn from experts across the globe who have come here, given us their time and their expertise, and have come up with, and coming up with designs for the stage area and costumes. This, this would include the lighting and the rigging system. I will tell you, the lighting will be a significant part of the theatre. You can put on a show just by, <laughs> with the lighting. Me is a gate man, key man, watchman, security expert. People have to respect me. Me no partial cater or curry favour. Them have to respect me. Where we are now, we are seeing the end. We have to nurture and give full expression to the creative faculties of, of the residents of Kingston and St. Andrew. The theatre is symbolic of that. This is a place that I performed at when I was like five, six, seven years old. We now have gold medal and a Jamaica festival. I used to do quadrille. It, 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 it's supposed to have the, the real look. You know, I can see the potential. Share in the dream. Share in the vision that is attainable and let us realize the dream. The next time we commit to you that the next time we stand here, the next time we gather here, that that will be a special moment in the history of the city of Kingston. Protect Jamaica, plant your grass. Help us become more resilient to climate change impacts. Protect Jamaica, plant a tree. It improves the island's national biodiversity. Trees may be fruit, ornamental, or timber, but must be native or suitable to the area's natural landscape. Join the Jamaica Million Tree Campaign and help to plant one million trees by June 30, 2019. This is a call to action by the National Environment and Planning Agency. From people-to-people -people exchange, national security to tourism, Jamaica and the United States have shared a long, prosperous and vibrant history. This cooperation continues with a two-day visit of U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Find out more next. Fifty-eight years and counting. That's how long Jamaica and the United States of America, USA, have established diplomatic relations. Over the years, both countries have partnered in areas of security, education, climate change, HIV and AIDS, health, trade, energy, and others. The relationship has seen high-level visits and meetings among government and ministerial heads across borders. 
Prime Minister Andrew Holness met with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence in the U.S. in 2019, and former U.S. President Barack Obama visited Jamaica in 2015. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo will visit Jamaica from January 21 to 22. As Secretary of State, he is the President's principal advisor on U.S. foreign policy and conducts negotiations relating to U.S. foreign affairs. Among his many duties as Secretary of State, Mr. Pompeo is required to participate in or direct U.S. representatives to international conferences, organizations, and agencies, negotiate, interpret, and terminate treaties and agreements, ensure the protection of the U.S. government's interests in foreign countries, supervise the administration of U.S. immigration laws abroad, promote beneficial economic intercourse between the United States and other countries, and supervise the Foreign Service of the United States. Secretary Pompeo is the 70th U.S. Secretary of State and was appointed to office in April 2018. Prior to that, he was elected by a majority vote in the U.S. Senate on January 23, 2017 as Director of the Central Intelligence Agency, where he served until April 2018. During his two-day working visit to Jamaica, Prime Minister Andrew Holness and senior cabinet ministers will hold bilateral talks with Secretary Pompeo. The agenda also includes a multilateral roundtable discussion with CARCOM foreign ministers. Mr. Pompeo will deliver a policy speech on U.S. Caribbean relations and the country's renewed commitment to closer ties based on shared values, interest and economic development. Areas of cooperation between the United States and the Caribbean vary among countries, but common interests include cooperation on national security and transnational crime. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith welcomes the visit of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo as a demonstration of commitment by both countries to strengthen engagements. We're very much looking forward to this opportunity to build and indeed reinforce our already close ties. The call on Jamaica is part of a six-day working trip for the Secretary of State, during which he will also visit Germany, Colombia, Costa Rica and Florida. Domestic violence has long-term and debilitating effects on children who live in homes where it takes place. Teachers, church leaders, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, friends, look out for the telltale signs of domestic violence in children you come in contact with. Children who live in homes where violence takes place have a hard time concentrating at school, leading to low grades. They are more prone to aggression, bullying, disobedience, and anxiety, or low self-esteem, and lack basic social skills. They often have stomach and headaches, or can't control their bladder and bowel movements. These children may also suffer from nightmares and disturbed sleep. They tend to be pessimistic about the future, become withdrawn, or get clingy. If you see a few or more of these signs in a child you know, please take action. Contact the resource numbers on the screen. We all must play our part to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, raise families, do business, retire, and of course, live violence-free. Your Jamaica Magazine program has come to a close, but only for today. We return tomorrow for another information-packed show, packaged with you in mind. Catch up on this and past programs by visiting jis.gov.jm. We're also available on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Add our mobile app to your smartphones. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.